bowing, burning incense, processions, dancing, baptism, prayer. What do all of these actions have in common? They are what we call rituals. Now like the word religion, which I try to define in another video, the word ritual is a short, simple word that tries to describe an extremely complex idea. Everything from folding your hands when you pray to human sacrifice. The word ritual covers it all. But when we have a word that tries to capture so much complexity in one word, it inevitably is very difficult to define. Why is taking a sip of wine at a Thanksgiving dinner different from taking a sip of wine on a Sunday at a church? Why is abstaining from food to lose weight called dieting, but when you abstain from food for religious reasons it's called fasting? In short, what is the definition of ritual, and what makes a ritual a ritual? Now, some scholars have tried to offer objective definitions of ritual. In the 1960s, the anthropologist Victor Turner defined ritual as prescribed formal behavior that has reference to beliefs in mystical beings or power. The 1987 edition of the Encyclopedia of Religion defines ritual as those conscious and voluntary, repetitive and stylized symbolic bodily actions that are centered on cosmic structure and or sacred presences. Okay, these definitions are fine, but here is my problem with objective definitions of complex terms like ritual or religion. You can always find exceptions to your definition. Victor Turner has a huge problem with the phrase reference to beliefs in mystical beings or power. Well, a wedding is a ritual whether you believe in God or not, so reference to beliefs in mystical beings just can't be part of our fundamental definition. And by comparison, the definition from the Encyclopedia of Religions just seems to overdefine ritual. Rituals are conscious, voluntary, repetitive, stylized, symbolic, bodily, centered on cosmic structure. Sure, a lot of these components do show up in rituals all the time, but with such a broad category, with so many criteria, is this category really helpful anymore? Does it really get to the crux of what ritual really is? Well, I would say no. I would say this definition misses the point entirely. To get to the best definition of ritual, we should stop focusing on the objective components of rituals, like their formality, their repetition, their symbolism, because these components so often change depending on your culture and depending on the ritual itself. We should instead focus on the fundamental purpose of ritual. What does ritual do? Well, here is where the scholar Jonathan Z. Smith swoops in and saves the day. Jay Z. Smith says ritual is above all an assertion of difference. In other words, ritual is a bodily strategy of acting in the world that differentiates certain actions from other actions making some actions more important or powerful than others. Catherine Bell, who was one of the greatest ritual theorists of all time, explained it best when she said, at a basic level, ritualization is the production of this differentiation. At a more complex level, ritualization is a way of acting that specifically establishes a privileged contrast, differentiating itself as more important or powerful establishes a privileged contrast. So, the difference between an action and a ritual action is that a ritual action employs a variety of culturally specific strategies to create difference. Now, this is kind of confusing, so let's use the Christian Eucharist as an example. The Eucharist is called a ritual meal because it differentiates itself from a regular meal through a variety of strategies. First of all, the Eucharist has a distinct period between meals, maybe once a week on a Sunday or one Sunday per month, but this repetition means to distinguish itself from an ordinary meal, which just happens every day whenever you're hungry. Secondly, the ritual meal is an insufficient amount of food for physical nourishment. What meal only consists of a little bit of bread and a sip of wine? This is different from an ordinary meal. This is special. Other strategies of differentiation might include the facilitation of the meal by an authority figure like a priest, the creation and use of sacred space like in a church. But Catherine Bell's point is that ritual is defined by its purpose to differentiate or distinguish from the ordinary, and not defined by the specific strategies that rituals deploy to try to accomplish this purpose. The formality, the repetition, the symbolism, these are all strategies that rituals frequently employ, but they are not universal objective components to all rituals. The Eucharist could have employed different strategies. Maybe the Eucharist could only be eaten once in your life, or maybe it could have been too much food instead of too little food for nourishment. The point is that these are culturally specific strategies that are not universal to all rituals. 
Rituals are defined by their assertion of difference. So what? Why is this definition better than, say, the definition from the encyclopedia that I mentioned earlier? It's because this definition, that ritual is an assertion of difference from the ordinary, this definition helps highlight how rituals frame actions in a very specific way. As the scholar Adam Seligman argues, it is the framing of the actions, not the actions themselves, that makes them rituals. Thus, both partaking of the Eucharist and shaking hands can be understood as actions that are framed ritualistically. So, working with this definition, we can see that ritual is a certain way of acting. Sipping wine is just an action. But when we frame that action in a very specific place, like a church, and we frame that action on a very specific period, like every Sunday, suddenly this action becomes a ritual action. We have employed certain culturally specific strategies to distinguish this ritual meal from an ordinary meal. Thus, we can view ritual as an assertion of difference. As always, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. So this was a more theoretical video, and I hope it makes sense. I think you can see now that religious studies scholars really like arguing over their terms. If this didn't make that much sense, though, check out my website at religionforbreakfast.com. I have a bibliography and a few extra thoughts, which hopefully will try to clear up this definition of what ritual is. And again, a special shout out to our patrons on Patreon. Because of you guys, Religion for Breakfast can continue to exist and continue to put out videos on religious studies. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, check out patreon.com slash religionforbreakfast and make a monthly contribution. This will help go to the ongoing costs of keeping this video blog going. And again, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.